only been here for about a year. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But um, I, I am the new guy out at Camp Allendale. How many of us have been to Camp Allendale before? That is so super awesome. Well, I want to take a little bit of time to also introduce um, about me um, so we can get to know each other a little bit before we dive into the word. So I have a, I have a picture of, man, my, my pride and my joy, my, my everything. Um, this is my family. Um, on the far left, that's Big Bird's costume. Uh, my wife, and she is actually eight and a half months pregnant. We are due really, really soon with number three. So th thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's really exciting. Um, I am holding my, our oldest, my daughter, Ruby. She is four, and she is Abby Cadabby. Anybody know our Sesame Street people? Obviously, I am Cookie Monster, and that is not a far-fetched thing. I love cookies. Who loves a good just chocolate chip cookie? Yeah, come on. Come on. That's right. And then, and then our little cannonball there, dressed as Elmo. His name is Otto, and Otto just turned two in September. And man, that is that's my world. Uh, that's 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 my family. And we live out at Camp Allendale. Um, if you guys remember Randy, um, I took Randy's spot. He retired, and I am what he does now. So I'm the executive director out at Camp Allendale, and I love it. And if you haven't been to camp before, man, I encourage you guys to come to camp this summer. It's going to be an awesome time, and you definitely, definitely do not want to miss it. But to dive in, um, I want to just first open us up with some scripture, okay? Psalms 25, 4 through 5 says this. It says, show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Verse 5 says, guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. And I want to welcome you guys to our final week of most likely two. Okay, most likely two dot, dot, dot is a technical thing. But during which you guys have been discovering ways to become great leaders. And if you've been here for the past in this series, you've looked at superlatives, phrases which we use in yearbooks and all that stuff, or end of year celebrations, which we use to celebrate seniors going on to college or eighth graders coming up to high school um, and more. And here's the bottom line with that, okay? Every great leader was your guys's age at one point. Okay. Every great leader was in your guys's shoes at one point. That being said, I want to see if you guys can realize based on, um, early photos of these leaders, some of them world leaders, some of them, uh, YouTube influencers, some of this, some of those people are just here in this church. Okay. So, um, let's go with the first, this is just going to be a shout it out where you are. Um, this was a pretty easy one. Mr. Beast, what's his, full, what's his full name though? Jimmy Donaldson, that's right. Let's go to the next photo. You guys see it? Now let's go back. You guys see it? You see it a little bit? Great job. That was an easy one. Here's a little bit harder one, okay? Here's another one. Anybody? Huh? No? What? No? No? No, it's not. Okay. So the only, this is the two hints I'll give you. He's a YouTuber. Okay, and the NASA hat. You guys see the NASA hat? Yep, Mark Rober, that's right. Let's see it. Yep, that's it. Can you, go, can you guys see it now? I, I can't, but whatever. All right, moving on. This one's extremely hard. Ooh, anybody? Oh, my gosh. Really? That's number 46, our 46th president, Joe Biden. Go back and forth. That was awesome, man. That was awesome. That was great. Even, even both services today didn't get it that fast. Did you really see it or were you just guessing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, moving on. Who do you guys think that is? What's his name? Yeah. The rapper. <laughs> well, I have some news for you. That person is standing right in front of you right now. And he is not a rapper. Nope, I am definitely not a rapper. <laughs> I have another silly one from high school. Can we see, show that one? I'm the gentleman on the left. That was me when I was your guys' age at camp, actually. Not at Camp Allendale. That was the camp that I grew up at. We would just get up there and lip sync and have a good time. Uh, there's a couple more. Let's, let's see. Man, look at that baller. Whoa. Can anybody recognize that baller, though? That is Zach. That's right. Here is a... Here's a sophomore. Here's a sophomore picture of Zach. And then obviously there's him today with Chelsea and their kids. That's right. Man. 
I got the down low on that one. That is him as a high school junior. And look at that vertical, man, that's awesome. All right, this is the last one. Last one, this one's gonna be pretty easy. <laughs> that's right, that's Pastor Josh. He graciously, I texted him and said, hey, can I get a picture of you and your senior yearbook um, picture? And he sent it to me with no questions asked and I really appreciated that. But yeah, that's Pastor Josh, isn't that awesome? What a good sport. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. So that's all of them, right? Oh yeah, that's it. So, so um, you guys, so much has happened uh, from, those, when, from the first picture that you saw of those people to the most recent so, picture that you saw. And a lot happened in making them to leaders that they are today. Ask any one of those people and they'll say that they had help becoming those leaders. You don't just accidentally become a great leader. That's not an accident. But they needed to know where to look and good examples of leadership to follow. And often that's one of the hardest things to find. And before we go on anymore, I want you guys to know that if you are in this room, if you're hearing the sound of my voice, man, you are a leader. Okay, some of you might be like, no way, not me, not me. But you are in, in the most smallest ways you can be a leader and in some really awesome ways. You guys are all leaders. And we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit too. And maybe you, when you think about being a leader, you might, you might, you guys have so many possibilities ahead of you. You guys really, really do, which is exciting. At the same time, moving forward and trying to be a leader can bring up a lot of uncertainty and a lot of anxiousness, maybe. You might feel this immense pressure when I encourage you to be a leader, when I tell you you're a leader, um, about maybe what you're doing with your life. What's next? Will you have it figured out? Um, and, and all these what ifs, and what if you transition into whatever's next, or what if what if you need help? And a lot of us have been there before, myself included. And it's okay. It's totally okay. Change and wondering what we can accomplish aren't just for the people who are graduating soon. We've all experienced change. And we've all needed some, uh, someone else to help us navigate, help speak into our lives what is next. And we might feel like we know what others lead. No, we, we might feel like we know what leading others looks like. But often we forget that leading well includes the ability to follow well. I'm going to say that again because it's really good. We might feel like we know what leading well looks like, but often we forget that um, we, might, we might forget that leading well includes the ability to follow well. And I want to tell you a quick example of personally my, my story. You see, I've only been here in like South Central Indiana for like literally a year, pretty much to the date, just a few weeks ago. Uh, is when we marked our one year anniversary of being here at Camp Allendale. And man, when I, when I moved here, I didn't know which way was up or down. I didn't even know where the Walmart was. I thought your guys' high school, I thought Franklin High School was Franklin College, just because it was that big. And I had no experience. I came, from, I came from central Illinois, and I did not know anything around. And that was outside of where I lived. If you've been to Camp Allendale, it's a pretty big place, right? I didn't know any of the names of the buildings. I don't know where they were. Um, and it was kind of intimidating because I was supposed to be this, I'm supposed to be the leader leading this place and I couldn't tell you where most of the stuff was. But, but here's the cool part. I had some awesome people who showed me around. They let me ask questions and didn't make me feel like an idiot. And even though I felt lost in my own home, in my own place, at my own camp, and that was okay. And I'm thankful for those people that took that time and that showed me around. And, and as we transition kind of into a new season, it's hard to be present in the one that we're in, but also being wanting to be great leaders. And many of us have a decent idea about what that means to be a leader, but we still feel like lost and in need of support. And that's okay. And what I want to refer to in scripture today is from 3 Thessalonians. This was a letter written to a community of people in the early church times who were also in a great deal of change. They knew that they were supposed to be leading well and they needed help, um, but they didn't know where to get it from or how to get there. And so let's take a look at and see how they navigated through this transition. So again, it's on, it's on the screen. If you want to pull it up on your phones, we're going to read through that. So this is 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. This is Paul writing to um, the church in Th of the Thessalonians. And Paul says this, 
We always thank God for all of you. Mentioning you in our prayers, we continue to remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering. You welcome the message with joy um, given by the Holy Spirit, and so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and um, Asin oh gosh, Asinia. The Lord's message rang out from you, and not only in Macedonia and Achaia, uh, your faith in God also became known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us, they tell how you turn to God from idols to serving the living and true God. You see, you guys, the church, when the church began, people followed Jesus for the first time. Jesus just, just went up to heaven. He just got beamed up to heaven. And people said, what do we do next? The Holy Spirit came down. And what's, what's next? You see, as we sit here today in Victory Christian Church, we're a, thousand to, we're a couple thousand years removed from that moment. And people really didn't have it figured out. We don't have it figured out by any means today. But even back then, it was like, what do we do? Uh, they, you see, the, the, the beliefs that these people believed was changing. Their, the community that they, they thought they had was changing. And the way that they interacted with their friends and family, all of that was changing. For early followers of Jesus, almost everything felt like it was changing. The ground was shifting beneath their feet, and they didn't really understand what was next for them. And you see, in, in addition to that, the people in power were making it really difficult for this community of believers to follow Jesus. They used harsh, tastic, they used harsh tactics to discourage people from following Jesus. And Paul, um, the, the church leader that you guys discussed last week, was one of the founders of the other church, a key founder of the early church, really. Um, he wrote a few letters to small churches all over modern-day Greece to encourage people through, um, through all the changes and challenges to stay on course, like we just read. And Paul started this letter by thanking these people for being such inspirational leaders. He reminded them of something that he saw them doing well, even though these things, things were hard for them. And this community was an awesome example. And they led the surrounding cities and they led their communities and showed what it meant to follow God. And Paul acknowledged that, which is cool. Paul helped these people also remember that even though they were following Jesus, at some point they used to worship false idols. They used to not follow Jesus. He did this to remind them of the Holy Spirit's impact on their lives. And because of this, the Thessalonians made a difference in their area, and those around them, causing people in neighboring cities to follow Jesus. And they did this all while being persecuted for their faith, for what they believed. Their faith grew deeply. And in amidst this transition and hardship, showing them how to be leaders and follow God's lead simultaneously was happening. The other church changed from, um, changed and learned to be leaders. They first needed to follow someone else, and they were learning how to follow God's lead. And learning to follow isn't really a new idea. We're going to kind of go back a lot earlier into the Old Testament, and we see in Psalm 119, uh, one of the longest chapters in the Bible. We're not going to read all of it, don't worry, but we're going to read some of it. We see here that many people at this time, including the early church communities, would have looked um, to for inspiration on how um, to, to lead and to impact people's lives um, so they could not only lead others, but also learn how to follow God's lead, okay? And when I think about following, it's, a, it's like a passive experience, right? But following God is something totally different. What I want you guys to see and hear is that following God doesn't just mean you are along for the ride. You see, Scripture shows us something completely different. Scripture shows us that following God is an active thing that we choose every day. It's an active experience. It's something that we choose or not, or choose not to do. And I want to invite you to see where God is leading and following and faithfully following that where he's leading. 
And as we read some of this poem from Psalms 119, um, we see that great leaders follow God's lead. So that's the whole verse. I'm only going to read a little bit for you guys of that whole verse, specifically 10, um, 11 through 13. I'm sorry. So Psalms 119, 11 through 13 is what I'm going to read. Um, and it's going to go like, it goes like this. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. And so, you guys, as we close, I want to ask you what you're passionate about. Could it be your, your student government? Could it be your sports, theater, local nonprofit, your camp? Man, come on out. Be passionate about camp. I would love to help you be passionate about camp. But I believe that you care, that you caring about these hobbies, these extracurriculars, um, so on and so forth, is evidence at God at work in your life. And your next step is to observe how God leads you in these places that you find yourself. And you can do that in these three ways. The first one, discover how God made you. Man, God made you uniquely and awesome. And that's great. God created you with gifts and passion. That's how he wired you. When you pursue them, you're already following God's lead because you're doing the thing that God created you to do, the way that God wired you to do. Cultivate those passions. Dig into them and the gifts and the clubs and the school and the organizations you are in and you represent. The second one is being this, lead wherever you are. God has opened up unique doors for you and given you an incredible opportunity that he hasn't given anybody else. So, so seize that opportunity. Take advantage of that. There's going to be, I know there's so many people around you guys that don't follow Jesus, that maybe have never heard about Jesus. We need to be in those times and leading wherever you are people to follow Christ. Ask God's Spirit to remind you how to lead well so that you are not alone. The third one is this, look for God at work. As you're in class, as you're in your sports, your clubs, your organizations, even with your family, know that God is already at work. And instead of thinking you have to figure it all out or have all the answers or something new to do in those spaces, what would it look like for you to practice those things we just read in Psalms 119? Ask God to open your eyes and meditate on his actions. God can teach you how the Holy Spirit is already moving and how you can be a part of that. So get curious about the ways to get involved. And so again, I want to leave you guys with this. Psalms 25, 4 and 5. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. So what is one thing that you can change to be a leader who follows God's lead. What's that one thing? You'll talk about that here in a second. And lastly, man, without a doubt, there are, there are going to be many moments in your guys' lives when you feel like things are changing and that you don't have any control. But in those moments, we see that great leaders know how to follow. And I hope that over this series that you guys have seen how Scripture shows you that as you follow God's words, and pay attention to God's spirit, you can become leaders who are most likely to make an impact on the way you lead. And know that great leaders follow through, great leaders choose love and integrity, and great leaders follow God's lead. Would you guys pray with me?